Hi, this is Adam Kunzmiller with Board Game Geek at Gen Con 2016, and I'm joined by Eric Lang and Jared Miller with CMON, and we're here to take a quick look at Rising Sun, an upcoming title. Rising so, Sun. Yes. What can you tell us about Rising Sun? Uh, it's about, well, clearly, it's about the Canadian invasion of the U.S. <laughs> uh, it's alternate timeline history game. Alternate timeline. Well, uh, the sushi was upgraded big time, yeah, right? Yeah. No, so uh, this is uh, this is a game I've been working on for about a year. Uh, I, w I was actually even working on this while I was working on Blood Rage, and it is a spiritual successor to Blood Rage. Okay. So the idea was, uh, when I was working on Blood Rage, I wanted to do a number of mythological games that basically I feel really passionate about, and I wanted to make games for that I haven't seen a lot of represented yeah. in the market. So. Um, Blood Rage was Vikings, uh, uh, and um, this one is Japan. So, um, uh, uh oh, the comments say Miller's mic. Oh, your mic's off. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. I shouldn't be talking. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, Just check the mute button on yours. All right. So, um, this so this game is a spiritual successor to Blood Rage. Okay. And uh, but where Blood Rage has like distant ancestry and risk, like dudes on the map, lots of battles and Valhalla uh, and dying. This is, has its roots in diplomacy. Okay. So this is a um, this is a gentleman's negotiation game uh, with bloody combat and monsters and cool and backstabbing. Stuff. I would imagine of yes. some sort. But um, it was also a game about honor. So. Mm. While you're, uh, as you play the game, there's an, uh, a live honor track that will tell that essentially is like the jerk meter of the game. You can actually visually see who's been like reneging on their deals and stuff, um, which is that's something I've wanted to, I've always wanted to see in a game like this. Uh, it still plays about 90 to 120 minutes. Uh, it's three to six players, and uh, it's going to have monsters, gods, ridiculous miniatures. Yeah, these these minis are incredible. Uh, and it's ex it's the exact same team as Blood Rage too. So it's the same producer. It's it's uh, McVeigh uh, Miniatures. It's guilty. Um, it's uh, Adrian Smith, the artist, mm -hmm. uh, who knocked it out of the park. Uh, so. Uh, when I started this game, I was actually talking to Adrian, and it turns out that he's just a big, a, he's just as big a like Japanophile as I am. We're like, let's let's do this, and this is what came out of it. Wow, we should zoom in on some. I mean, the level yeah, of just is, intricate detail on these, like the little, you know, the texture on his shoulder, and that kind of thing, is really, really yeah. Incredible. And some of these minis, they'll have like clan symbols on their like feet, and, like on that arm. Yeah, there's yeah one of oh, so that's the Oni. But like even their clan symbols, these very small things are there. It's the detail. Like Studio McVeigh. I mean, it's just amazing and what, what they've done. It, it's the miniatures for Blood Rage. We loved, mm -hmm. um, and these are just blowing away all of our expectations. Absolutely. So we can't wait for people to actually get these on their table. Um, I think you mentioned, but this is coming to Kickstarter in uh, 2017. We haven't announced an official date yet, but we did want to just get it out there and get people excited about it. With the it. appetite, yeah. right, get the yeah, buzz going. Like, well, I'm still doing some late development on it, mm -hmm. and it's like the, it's done when it's done. Uh, sure. just, yeah. We're, uh, we're going to take, gonna take yeah. my time, make it just absolutely perfect, yeah. you know, play test the heck. I mean, we're, we've been playing it already for over a year, but I just want to make it, I mean, it's got to live up to Blood Rage, right? Sure. Right. Uh, it's going to be a completely different game. Um, even though like it's got gods and monsters and uh, that cool stuff, it is going to be a different game. So I wanted to make something that can stand side by side uh, with Blood Rage and just fulfill a different experience. So you've mentioned the interest in you know this being a spiritual successor to Blood Rage and starting on it there. Do you already have some some little sparks of what the spiritual successor to this is going to be? What? Oh, yeah. Where are we going after the? the Pantheon of Japan and oh everything yeah, else. It's, I, I've known for I've known for before I even started working on this, but focus. <laughs> it's feudal Canada. That's feudal, feudal Canada. Canada. Yeah, feudal yeah. Canada. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and say it. Oh, it's bloody. Yeah, it's, yeah, bloody. it's rough. I've, I've heard yeah. it, little so. beaver miniatures oh, and yeah. moose and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But we'll During talk the great about that more later. Divide. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, great. Well, thank you for talking to us about Rising Sun. And uh, yeah. look forward to seeing what else uh, comes oh, yeah. out. Is this all of the figurines, or just a sampling? So actually, there are more, but we just brought a few of them uh, over at our booth. If mm -hmm. people are at Gen Con, they can check out more of them at the Simon booth. But uh, there are a lot more, and they are equally as impressive. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to actually. Some get of them are 
crazy. They're, yeah, they're crazy. insane. And we can't wait to, we're, we'll definitely get more news out there soon, but we're gonna wait for it to, to kind of get to where it needs to be before we get too deep out there. But we just want people to know it's coming. And we're all excited about it. All right, great. All right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll see Thank if anybody you. on chat has any questions. Not really. No. <laughs> That's it. It's canceled. It's canceled. Yeah, so we canceled. What, it. Are these, what are these made out of in their kind of preliminary? Well, these are resins. These are um, resins. But we, what we did is we painted over them with a, in a nice, classy sort of um, ivory color to mm -hmm. it, which I love. I think it's a, so. One of the things, um, one of my, the prime visions I had for this game is I wanted to be, I wanted to be really elegant and classy and striking mm -hmm. and stuff. Where I mean, just have a different feel to it, right? Like Blood Rage is like raw, like yes. metal, raw, Vikings. Yeah. Like, this game is a, this is a much more sophisticated. Uh, gentlemanly game, uh, but there is lots of bloody combat. Uh, will there be demons in Rising Sun? That's a demon? That's an Oni. Yeah. So Absolutely. I guess that's a big yes. So one of the cool things about Japanese mythology is there are some messed up monsters in it, like crazy messed up, like the Yurei, the uh, Yorgamundo, and all that crazy stuff. Yeah, it's in here. I have a question. <laughs> Somebody wants to know if that's your only shirt. <laughs> I guess they've seen you in that shirt. I have a lot. many different types of panda shirts. <laughs> if uh, if I was supposed to listen to heavy metal when I was playing Blood Rage, which I did, mm -hmm. what would I be listening to while I'm playing this? That's a really good question. I don't know. Um, I don't. Uh, weirdly enough, I, a lot of the stuff I was listening to was Dead Can Dance, actually. All right. Like they're, they're <laughs> more the the, the the early '80s goth stuff. Yeah, hey, I like it. Somebody else wanted to know when Victorian Masterminds is coming. Uh, late uh, 2017, I don't know. It's done when it's done. <laughs> like, again, I'm in the, right now, the headspace I'm in, I don't, I'm no rush to finish any game. Mm -hmm. Like, I want perfect rather than, I mean perfect, as perfect as you can get in board right, games, right. but perfect rather than fast. So sure. when, when we're completely and utterly happy with it, it'll be done. That's great. So we want to know, will this be like Monkey Magic Journey to the West? Nope. I have no idea what that's referring to. <laughs> Not even a little. <laughs> I mean, this is, so, I mean, if, if you can picture Blood Rage, like Blood Rage was authentic um, Norse mythology as viewed through my sort of twisted filter. Mm -hmm. That's what Rising Sun is, right? It's authentic. I, I use a lot, all the authentic, uh, the, the authentic monsters, the real kami, the real, like the real Shinto priesthood, the real bushi and all, like, all the titles are real, all the flavor is um, exactly what you expect, but it's filtered through my sort of like more, more, a little bit more higher fantasy. That's what I was looking for. Um, some people are asking, you know, you mentioned kind of the diplomacy aspect. What are mm -hmm. some of the mechanics of the game? What will the play experience be like? How much, well, how deep do I, am I allowed to get? This is, um, we, so, I mean, we haven't been some, going deep on it right. right now, but I mean, you can you can talk some about it. Sure. I mean, the, so the game is when we're talking about like the game is still in development. I mean, it's ninety five percent done, but that last five percent is the hardest. Right? right. And who knows what can change as a result, right? Right. Right. Of course. So the um, I mean, there's so they're going to be shifting alliances between the game. Like their players are going to partner up with other players and share bonuses through, um, and those two will share bonuses and don't kill each other in combat, but. Um, however, there's, an, there's a nested incentive for treason to uh, break your alliance and get a whole bunch of stuff on your own. And the game is built on a sort of dharmic wheel of timing. That's how the actions work. Mm -hmm. So um, how you guys, how you guys, you guys will, um, there's a negotiation phase where everybody decides who they're going to ally with. And of course you can give each other money, you can release hostages to each other um, in order to make deals. but. Um, most of the, a lot of that's going to come down to like, what's what's it worth it to you to be right. my partner? Even though they're mutually beneficial, they're never even. Sure. Um, that's where that comes into play. But the, um, I also didn't want to do a negotiation game where people are just spending like five hours talking about the game. So it's actually negotiation very tight, and very focused, and even if you're not a good diplomacy player, there's enough. There's enough nested complexity in the game, enough of sort of engine building for the like the dynamic avenues wheel. for you to pursue. You can just there's enough closed stuff that you can just do for yourself and build yourself up uh, in order to win. And you don't, even though it's like diplomacy, there's a um, 
is a game about like territorial control. Of course, there's a lot of that in this game, uh, but that's not the only way you can win. You can also win by uh, you can win by just being a master of combat. You can win. One of my favorite things, I'm saying too much, Jared's looking at me. That's fine. You can also I'm win by, too. <laughs> by being a master of virtue. Um, there are cool virtues that you can pick up, uh, which are all based on the real uh, Bushido virtues, um, where you can just be good to other players at the table in a um, very specific way. Um, in order to uh, give yourself points, in order so to you're recognized for your honor. Your, uh, yeah, absolutely yeah, true. Honoring, but of course, uh, being a game, behavior. people are going to think about it. They're going to kind of try to game it, <laughs> right. and so that they're not helping their opponents too much, which is really cool because that's <laughs> that's how the, that's the job, that's, that's what it's like to be a daimyo, right? It's all about face. It's all about being recognized. For right. Right. Not, what you not actually good. You just need to be. A, you need the appearance of being right. good. Exactly right. Right. And the way the honor works in this game, like if you're a top honor, there's you can't. There's doesn't matter how awesome you are, you can't go up any further. Right. Once you're at the bottom, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. You can be a jerk. <laughs> and do you have like a kind of a targeted playtime in mind? Uh, 90 to 120. Cool. Uh, obviously, like, you know, season to taste, like some people, players like to talk all the time. It'll play a little bit longer, but I like to, our game's a little streamlined. Well, yeah, it looks like, it's pretty good for much it. Oh, how many players? Three to six. Nice. I always like hearing anything higher than five. <laughs> Even if it's just one, we try. sometimes it makes all the difference in the world. Good. I try. I mean, so generally when we're doing play counts, uh, well, we print on the box, I want to make sure that it's good at all those play sure. counts, right? Or at least different enough to justify like, printing it on it. So. Like the Blood Rage could have been a theoretically could have been a six-player game, but it was just too, it was too messy, too much downtime, mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't flow very well. Um, this one, because of how the because of how the the action wheel is constructed, it, there's very little extra uh, playtime per player, so that's why I want to make it go up. Uh, do you prefer designing alone, or do you like working with another designer? Uh, I I love both. Uh, honestly, I couldn't. I would I would not want to do without either. So like games like this is like it's pure this is it's like pure like unfettered art. Like this is exactly what I want. I don't compromise with you know with anything. Uh, but I also love working with other really talented designers and like and doing stuff that I would never have done on my own. Sure. Right. And being pushing uh, uh, and being pushed into directions. And I love just learning. seeing the different perspectives on whatever challenges you encounter as you're you know, exactly. As you're and I've learned a lot together. from all my co-designers. Yeah. Cool. Does it have seppuku in it? Of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's got seppuku, it's got hostage taking, it's got hot, uh, it's got Ronin mercenaries, it's got uh, it has well <clears throat> more things. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta leave some surprises. But... <laughs> uh, yeah. That's about it. Well thanks for coming coming over and talking to us. How's Thank the show you. been for you guys so far? It's been crazy. It's been awesome. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, Gen Con's a blur to me. I, I, like, I'm here. I know I'm here. I know I'm in a hall. <laughs> I know there are lots of games going on. There's lots of people. They're shaking a lot of hands. But I can't really process it till I get home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been so great, especially, I mean, you've been hanging out at the booth with us, thankfully, for some of the time. And right. it's just been incredible, just the number of people that are coming through. And just, it's been a lot of fun. Despite being crazy, it's a lot of fun. So oh, I'm so thrilled that Bloodborne is like, I, I, I was a little worried about, honestly, a little worried about Bloodborne because we made a really, you know, it's, it's a game based on a huge, sprawling, yes, like, open right. world. It's a very selective piece game. of that world. And right. what's, and on what, was adamant we we're going to make a short, uh, short, really playable, uh, tight, agonizing game, in, um, that was really accessible. And it looks like I mean, it's, I see it everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah, it's um, an, I'm, incredible to and see. And Bloodborne that. players are loving it, which is like yes. that. I mean, that's yeah. you know. That's, were you I'm, a Bloodborne player yourself? Uh, I actually, I, I was a Dark Souls player, mm -hmm. and I started playing Bloodborne to play the uh, to work on the game. Sure. And uh, I, I love it. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> I don't have the attention span or the yeah. uh, for that. But I loved it. Like within yeah. within 40 minutes, it was it 35 minutes of Bloodborne? I knew exactly what the game was going to yeah. be. Yeah. I mean, it was as a Bloodborne player. Like I've played a lot of it, and I love the game and that's not just speaking as like Simon just like as a fan of the game I feel like it's really nailed it it's something that like because we play a lot of our own games mm -hmm. but that's one where like whenever someone's like oh I want to play this game I'm 
yes, I'm there. Let's do it. Nice. You know, I'm happy to show you the demo. So it's it's a lot of fun. So when did Cool Mini or Not become CMON? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. Uh, we announced. Happy birthday! Thank you. <laughs> now, we uh, we revealed the new logo. It, it kind of leaked out some on Wednesday through like pictures we were posting, and mm -hmm. other people were taking pictures of setup. But uh, we officially revealed this new logo and uh, just kind of shortened it because we've always used uh, CMON as a shorthand, right? Because right. writing out Cool Mini or not all the time yeah. is kind of... Why did I do this to myself? Right, exactly. <laughs> so now that we've really started to diversify our line, because mm -hmm. um, we're still very true to like high-quality miniature games, right. right? This is the CM? Right. Yes. Um, but we've, we have a lot of things, like Bloodborne has no miniatures. You That's know, the un ON. Exactly, yeah. Unusual Suspects, Potion Explosion, the, like started a lot with like the Grizzle, you know? Those are very different yeah. game experiences that people didn't expect from us. Right. Um, Grizzle is so good. It is amazing. Um, and Creo, if people, uh, not to get really off topic, but if people like the Grizzle, we just also uh, launched uh, Creo here, which is also from Sweet Games. It's amazing. It is a fully cooperative game. There is no communication between players unless you're like spending little resources to just show cards. But it's a small box, very tight experience. And if you if people like the Grizzle, Creo is amazing. But it's experiences like that and games like that where we thought, you know, this is the time that we could really kind of change our image but still stay true, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still making those games. And our paintbrush logo is still around, um, but we're leaving those for like Wrath of Kings and Dark Age or sure. miniature lines where that it speaks to that hobby, right? Um, so we just thought it was a good time and that way we didn't have to type out cool mini or not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. probably already saved yourself. Minutes. We did. Minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Valuable yes. minutes. See, that's, you're becoming like me. You have to, how can I shave off exactly. minutes of, yeah. our, of this mm -hmm. experience? Yeah. Are we getting kicked out? Uh, they can't kick. Not yeah. yet. I love the cheer out I think you probably, right. probably kick out. Oh, yeah. I just read there that there's already a page for Rising Sun on BGG. Nice. Apparently. People are quick. I love the internet. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. So many people doing so much great work for you. Yes. <laughs> I'll bet you it's like the photos are like just these guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Screen caps. I mean, I've posted some closer photos like on Simon's Facebook and everything. So oh, okay. they can cool. always steal those. Can you do like a super zoom from the overhead? Like okay. just so they're not dead. Do you want <laughs> yes. do you want them to lie down? Like just kinda hang out? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm personally you guys have a highly technical setup. It's like one of those 1970s children's shows where it was like a lying down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to move it all this way. Yeah, now that's good. Yeah. Because then it just goes on a pallet. There we go. It's just a big heavy. Before on camera two is great. Well, we had them like that the whole time. Can it zoom in anymore? I uh, guess not. But yeah, these are these are incredible. Yeah, and we we do have some more pictures online of them a little close if people want to check out some of the details, some back and front shots of some of them, and um, there'll be more of those to come. But yeah, it's the cameras really don't do them justice. Uh, it's true, but they're amazing. Actually, I gotta say, one of the things I really love is that uh, one of the things we really capture is so um, I don't know if you guys can see. Like this is a this is a badass um, female. Uh, Just go a little lower. Look at that camera right there. Yeah. Uh, samurai, and she's like even though like she's totally badass with like katanas and all that stuff, and that's a mask there you can't see. It's still like really. It's really flowing and elegant and all that kind of stuff. So it's. Um, there's a part of me that I. This is awful because I can't remember the director's name. Who's the director of the movie Hero and House of Flying Daggers? Oh, I don't know. But that guy. That guy. Like that that aesthetic sense mm -hmm. where it's like everything is like really. Uh, it's it is totally badass, but you have this real cool sense of flow. That was like that was the visual direction we had for this. Closer shot right there too. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like, you, yeah, you look at that, right? It's like that, you know, that fan will cut you. <laughs> yeah. But, but you can also just go to a ball after one. And like, even like the little detail at the end of these little scabbards. I know a lot of us are really cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I think we'll wrap it up there. All right. But always good to talk to you. Yeah, Thank we you. appreciate you having us on. It was a pleasure. Pleasure? Cool. Good night, BGG. Bye. Bye.